Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to another PDF episode. So today we're going to be talking about the draft since it finished, I believe it was Monday. It was either Sunday or Monday and it actually finished pretty quickly. Um, so I got the schedule going. Uh, battles will be starting this weekend. It will be starting on Saturday and each round will last from Saturday to the next Friday. I think that works pretty well in general. Um, so remember when we're going through this draft, uh, it's going to be in order of who drafted, but it's not going to be in order of what was drafted. Um, so you can see team one in its entirety and then team two in its entirety. So if you want to see who was drafted first and how it was drafted and all that jazz, um, head down to the spreadsheet in the, in the comments and not in the comments, in the description below and, uh, you'll get your info. So. Moving on to the first person. So the first team is going to be the New Mexican Drift Blims, and that is run by Koss VGC. Um, he came in second in the PDL last season, so he got his choice of pick for this season. Uh, he decided to go first because the person who came in first place decided to go third, and we'll get to him in a little bit. So he starts off with uh, Salamence, which means he now has access to Mega Salamence, and whatever kind of Salamence he wants to run, Followed up with a Rotom Wash, an Entei, a Breloom, Sableye, Porygon 2, Excadrill, Wigglytuff, Yanmega, and Espeon. So as you can see, uh, his two Mega choices were definitely going to be Salamence and Sableye. Two pretty strong Megas, um, and definitely have a lot of things to do in this format. So that's pretty good for him. Uh, his Legendary, he only decided to end up with one, and that was Entei. And uh, Entei is quite the bruiser. So he'll definitely give us some kind of issues. Uh, it looks like he went for a little bit of a trick room option in Porygon 2. You know, nothing too crazy because he only has two setters in Porygon 2 and Espeon. Um, but uh, a lot of people tend to draft trick room in this league, especially myself. Uh, so it's definitely there for a counter. Uh, so moving on, the person who drafted se second was Pyromaniac720. He is the owner of the Blackthorn Dragonites. His draft was Politoed, Swampert, Ludicolo, Raikou, Metacham, Crobat, Ambipom, Kabutops. Uh, that's not supposed to be a Yanmega. That is actually supposed to be a Tornadus Therian and a Malamar at the end. That is my bad. That's supposed to be a Malamar. So you grabbed Malamar. So as you can see from this team, I just can't believe I missed that. Um, as you can see from this team, he's very obviously Rain. He's got three Swift Swimmers. Uh, he's got a, uh, what, what was the other one I said? Malamar. Again, a lot of people are trying to make sure that Trick Room doesn't beat them. And of course, Trick Room can stop a Swift Swim team pretty easily. Uh, his two Megas are in fact Metacham and Swampert. And his two Legendaries are Tornadus Therian and Raikou. So that's an interesting combination, but it's very heavily on rain. Um, the third pick was Mineno Jardim, Jardim, I think that's how you pronounce it. He's the owner of the Porto Hydragon, Hydragons, and um, he was the person who came in first. He decided to go third, so that's where we put him. So his draft was Kangaskhan, Togekiss, Rotom Heat, Gorgeist, Crocodile, Bronzong, Samurott, Tyrantrum, Toxicroak, and Cobalion. So the legendaries of are of course Cobalion and the Megas. He actually also only has one of those and that's Kangaskhan. Um, but a lot of very strong picks, especially in that Rotom Heat, the Mega Kangaskhan. Um, those are very powerful Pokemon in this format, so the fact that they're both on the same team is quite scary. Little interesting sleeper picks in Samurott and Tyrantrum, something that you don't really see very often, so I'm excited to see what he wants to do with that. Um, but that's his draft in general. Uh, so number four is going to be Juancito Marvel, owner of the Am Amityville Haunters. His draft lineup is Thunderous Incarnate, Heatran, Clefable, Hitmontop, Gudra, Weavile, Blastoise, Tangrowth, Pinsir, and Reuniclus. So of course his two legendaries were actually his first two picks, and that is Thunderous Incarnate, and Heatran, while his two mega picks were Blastoise and Pinsir. 
So very interesting. He obviously has somewhat of a trick room angle with the Reuniclus. Um, and, you know, things like Tangrowth, Blastoise, and Hitmontop. They all kind of work really well under Trick Room. But then he also has a little bit of a different, different with uh, Thunderous, Weavile, and Pinsir, since they are, of course, pretty fast. So that's pretty interesting to see that he has two different modes. Um, of course, if you see the Reuniclus and the Slow Pokemon, you kind of know where that's going to be going. Um, but it's definitely a very well-balanced draft. Uh, in terms of speed and type it and stuff like that. So moving on, we have Moody Pones at number five, owner of the Sutopolis Melodics. Her draft was Landorus Therian, Venusaur, Azumarill, Hydreigon, Mawile, Meowstic Male, Infernape, Rotom Fan, Trevenant, and Lapras. So of course her legendary picks were Landorus Therian, and that's really about it. Her Megas, on the other hand, were Venusaur and Mawile, two of some of the strongest Megas in the game. Um, Venusaur sporting that really high defensive quality, and Mawile being incredibly powerful. Um, does have a couple of options in terms of speed. She has Meowstic and Trevenant for Trick Room kind of shenanigans, but she does also have some other fast options in Landorus and Hydreigon and Infernape. So again, another well-balanced thing, although she does have um, two grass types and two water types, to, so to see how she kind of goes with that, we'll see. And of course, that double ground immunity in Rotom Fan cannot beat that anywhere else. Uh, so moving on, number six is X-Ray's Ovation, owner of the New Jersey Dwebbles. His lineup is Aegislash, Cresselia, Tarakion, Garchomp, Whimsicott, Empoleon, Darmanitan, Electivire, Weezing, and Pidgeot. So his legendary picks are Cresselia, Curses, and Tarakion, and his Megas are actually Garchomp and Pidgeot. So some interesting things to note, you've got you know your standard typical fare in Aegislash, Cresselia, Tarakion, and Garchomp, four of some of the highest used Pokemon going straight to one guy. That's just nuts. Then you've got the annoyance in Whimsicott, which is just kind of crazy that he also got that. And then you got a few sleeper picks, such as Empoleon, Weezing, Darmanitan. Basically, his entire top half is a very common, very well used, very well known. And then his bottom half of the team is pretty much a lot of things that people don't really use a lot in VGC. Um, but are good in their own right. So we'll see what he does with that and uh, see where he goes and, and what he decides his strategy will be. Uh, so moving on to number seven, we have Mega Galadiator, uh, owner of the Undella Bay Underdogs. Uh, so his team is Metagross, Suicune, Gardevoir, Clefairy, not Clefable, Golbat, not Crobat, Uxie, Pachirisu, Rhydon, not Rhyhorn, I mean Rhyperior, <laughs> of course, not Rhydon, um, and Porygon Z and Hitmon Lee, right? Hitmon Lee. Yeah, so many Hitmons, it could be crazy. So his legendary picks are Suicune and Uxie, uh, and his mega picks are Metagross and Gardevoir. So Again, some very interesting picks. Uh, most of them are very not well used. I mean, Clefairy seems like an interesting pick, but it does have follow me and it's very bulky. Um, Crobat seems to be an interesting pick, especially when you look down at the draft. Uh, Crobat had not been picked yet, so Golbat was actually picked before Crobat, which is very interesting. Um, Oxy is, is, is a Pokemon that's not used very often, but it has similar stats to Cresselia, losing out on, you know, it doesn't have, it's not as strong as Cresselia defensive-wise, but it's like a mini Cresselia, so it, it's kind of a good substitution when Cresselia is taken. Suicune, of course, is just your typical fare of Suicune, and um, Pachirisu is again another interesting Pokemon that is used quite a lot. A lot of follow me tactics on this team. Um, also, just so you guys know, this team is the first team to actually go through with a trade, and that trade was with my team, and we'll get to that. Um, Clefairy was traded from my team over to his team, and I took his Kecleon, so that's, that, that's uh, already the first trade of the season, just so you guys know. Uh, so moving on, we're actually going to get to my team at run turn. Uh, my team is New York Haunter, and uh, what we drafted was Charizard, Tyranitar, Dusclops, Gastrodon, Hariyama, Electros, Kecleon, 
Drudagon, Mr. Mime, and Escavalier. So very obviously, first of all, my Megas are Charizard and Tyranitar. I don't have a single Legendary on my team. I was considering going for um, one of the Lake Spirits for my Psychic types, but going with the fact that I have Charizard and Tyranitar both weak to spread moves, I figured Mr. Mime would be nice with the nice and powerful wide guard. Um, but as you can see, obviously my, my straight up plan is Trick Room, I don't really have any other options. Um, I grabbed Charizard first, I'm actually surprised Charizard lasted until round 8, um, but Charizard's really strong, so I got Charizard Y out of that. Um, Charizard Mega X is actually still up on the board, no one took it, but um, you other teams can get Charizard X if they want. Um, I also grabbed Tyranitar because not only is he the hardest counter to, to Charizard in the game so far, um, He's really powerful and really, really flexible. He can pretty much do any role you want. So, basically, my team's very straightforward in terms of the general strategy, but I like a lot of random picks. Also, I had Magnezone over Electros, and I did the first drop of the season, and I traded Magnezone for Electros. Again, more flexibility. There's a lot of things that my team can do in different aspects, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so, moving on. Number 9 is at Eskio66, owner of the Dungan and Typhlosions. His draft is as follows. Sylveon, Lopunny, Tornadus, Incarnate, ah, it's so hard to say those names sometimes, Machamp, Ninetales, Heliolisk, Zoroark, Dragonite, Jumpluff, and of course Typhlosion. So his Megas are Lopunny, and that's it, unless I'm missing something. No. And his legendaries are Tornadus, and that's it, unless I'm missing something. So you can see he's got the Sylveon, which is one of the strongest um, Pokemon right now, and the Tornadus, which is another Prankster user. Not as good as Thunderous, but still just good. Then he's got the Ninetales Typhlosion combo with the Jumpluff and the Heliolisk, really sporting that sun power. Um, and, a dra and, and really going to be playing mind games with you with that Zoroark. So, kind of a good stuffs team. Nothing really, no pure strategy outside of the pseudo sun that he's running. So, that's going to be interesting to see. Now, round 10, or team 10 rather, um, is at Slim Kali. Uh, he is owner of the OK OKC Thunderous. His draft was Gyarados, Zapdos, Conkelder, Volcarona, Lipard, Alakazam. Thunderous Therian, Parasect, Magneton, and Braviary. So his legendaries are Zapdos and Thunderous, while his Megas are Gyarados and Alakazam. So uh, some very interesting picks. Uh, he got Magneton. Now, I had Magnezone already, so he got Magneton instead of Magnezone. But they do have dis distinct enough stats that maybe that's what he was shooting for in the beginning. Um, a very odd pick in Alakazam. You really don't see Alakazam or Parasect, um, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. Uh, and of course, Zapdos is one of the better legendaries. Um, not used as much in 2015, but it was very used. It was used widely in 2014, so it's certainly a good pick. Now, moving on to draft number 11. We only've got four more guys, so stick with me. We've got Shizuka Mikudo. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not entirely sure. Owner of the Nimbasa Ninetales. Her draft was as follows. Lucario, Greninja, Talonflame, Rotom Cut, Latios, Mamoswine, Chandelure, Nidoking, Klefki, and Noivern. So her legendaries were only going to be Latios, and the Megas were Lucario and Latios. So Latios actually counts towards both the Mega and the Legendary because it can do both. Um, not, it can't really do legendary, it is legendary, but you get what I'm saying. Again, a fairly good stuff's team, you know, you've got potential Trick Room Setter and Chandelure if needed. Uh, Klefki is just a general nuisance, but a very fast team in general. You've got the Lucario, Greninja, Talonflame, Latios, Noivern, uh, those are all very fast Pokemon. And then you've got kind of middling tier fast in Chandelure, Nido King, um, Mamoswine, and Rotom. And of course, Klefki has Prankster, so there's no real need to worry about speed on that. So I'd say it's a good stuff's team, if anything. And uh, hopefully it looks good, especially with the Talonflame pick. Talonflame's a very big nuisance 
especially with that fast, fast, fast Brave Bird. So moving on to number 12, we've got Liquid Ice from the Tennessee Sea Kings. Um, his draft was Melodic Hip Hitmontop? No, that is not a Hitmontop. Hippowdon, Ferrothorn, Chansey, Aerodactyl, Frostlass, Jolteon, Delphox, Heracross, and Hitmonchan. So legendaries, there are none. He's drafted absolutely no legendaries like myself, but his megas are Aerodactyl and Heracross. Um, Aerodactyl is really not used anymore. It doesn't have... It's not as potent as the other Megas, but it definitely has its uses, so we'll see where he goes. Definitely going for a bit of a more defensive strategy, especially those first four picks in Melodic, Hippowdon, Ferrothorn, and Chansey. They form quite the core, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what he does with that. And a lot of fighting types uh, in Heracross and Hitmonchan, but um, I think he covers it pretty well with the Ferrothorn and the Aerodactyl being able to take fighting, the flying type moves, especially with the Jolteon being able to dish out some fast lightning paced power. Um, Frostlass is again another Pokemon that's not really used very much, um, but it certainly has its its tricks up to, up, up its sleeves. Um, the question that remains is: Is it a one trick pony, or can it do a little bit more? Can we see something outside of Focus Ash Destiny Bond? Um, we'll see what Liquid, Liquid Ice wants to do with that. Uh, so 13, remember we have two more after this, this and one more, um, is Ian Lutz. He won the tournament to get in, so congratulations and welcome. Uh, his team is Virginia Verizion, and of course his first pick is Verizion. Uh, then we've got Florges, Arcanine, Scizor, Haxorus, Staraptor, Jellicent, Manectric, Nidoqueen, and Lunatone. So Legendary is Verizion, there's nothing else. Megas are Scizor and Manectric. And overall, it's a pretty standard, not, I wouldn't say standard, but a pretty, it's a, I'd say uncommon team. You see these Pokemon often, but not often enough to say that they're in the top 12 or whatever. Um, but the Megas in Scizor and Manectric are actually very strong Megas. Um, the only odd, weird sleeper pick is the Lunatone. I'm kind of curious to see what he's going to be doing with that. I know myself, I've never been able to find a good use for Lunatone, so hopefully he'll deliver and show us something really great. Um, and overall, it again, a pretty good stuffs team. No overarching theme, and that's sometimes pretty good in this kind of format. You don't want to show your entire hand right away. Um, and of course, you know, Jellicent being probably one of the most common Pokemon on his team. Uh, definitely quite a force to be reckoned with. And finally, the last team at Hidden Power Dark, owner of the DC Dugongs. And what we've got is a crazy team. We've got Gengar, Amoongus, Gothitelle, Scrafty, Bisharp, Altaria, Dugong, Exploud, Golem, and Articuno. So the legendaries are as follows it is Articuno and that is it Megas are Altaria and Gengar and as you can see we've got a little bit of a Parish Trap team um, both Gengar and Gothitelle can trap Gengar and Altaria and Dugong I believe can use Parish Song um, but there's some very odd picks on this team especially that bottom half Dugong, Exploud, Golem and Articuno Things that are very, very, very rare to see in in VGC. Um, very interesting to, to note that these things you just really don't see that often. So very, very curious to see where he's going to go with that. Um, very curious. So that's the draft, guys. Those are the 14 teams that are going to be here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, like I said, the battles will be starting this weekend which means sometime next week we'll be having some uploads for those battles. Um, I will be uploading commentary over a couple of battles every week. Uh, I'll be uploading my personal battles, of course. Uh, some of the other members will be uploading their personal battles, of course, as well. Um, and all of this will be found right there on the playlist, right on the channel, right in the PDF News Info and Battles playlist. I believe that's the exact title. Um, so do me a favor, drop in there, check out what you can see. So far we have the rules overview and the draft analysis, which is this video. And uh, from now on it will be mostly battles. 
Uh, we'll announce trades, drops, and things after every week if there is, and um, maybe some other things. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Tell me who you think is the strongest team in the game. I already think it's me, but that's just bias. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Peace.